Hello again. Welcome to the Adams Corner YouTube channel. And I thank you in advance for watching this, or at least uh, attempting to see what I'm up to. Uh, this is a look at some recent 4K and Blu-ray releases, as I normally do from time to time. And so let's get down to it. MVD releasing is uh, putting out uh, The Linguini Incident, which is um, featuring David Bowie and Roseanne Arquette. You've got Andre Gregory, Buck Henry, Vivica Lindfors, and Marley Matlin after she had won her Oscar. Uh, this is um, Roseanne Arquette, uh, a waitress at a deli, uh, a, uh, it's kind of a hip New York City type restaurant um she's um got a bartender there who needs to get married by the end of the week they decide to rob the place um you know hijinks ensue uh this is a director's cut of the film that's uh never been commercially released on uh, blu-ray and um never released on blu-ray at all as far as i know actually so um anyway mvd visual is putting this out uh, you also get the original theatrical version of the film which is actually five minutes longer uh, the uh director's cut is like 93 minutes and then the theatrical version is 98 minutes uh you get um 4K transfer from the film's inner positive uh, an introduction by the director audio commentary by the director and the actors um Rosanna Arquette and Esther Ballant. Um, making of the Linguini Incident, a full-length documentary about the making of the film, featuring interviews with uh, behind-the-scenes talent. Um, yeah, it's a slip. Comes in a nice little slip case here. Uh, here's what the uh, what the actual disc looks like. There you go. There's the back. Uh, so yeah, the Linguini Incident, a uh, kind of a cult favorite from 1992. MVD Visual is releasing this. A uh, couple of Kino releases here. You have Nero Margin on 4K for the first time ever. And uh, this uh, is with uh, Ann Archer and Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman's uh, Ann Archer witnesses a mob murder. Uh, J.T. Walsh is a blind date that she's on. He gets He's murdered. And so uh, Gene Hackman uh, is winds up finding himself... Um, in a situation where he has to protect her, and they're on a train, and the mob's trying to get to her uh, before she tells what she's seen or whatever. Uh, the reviews on this film were kind of uh, mixed when it came out. Uh, I know Roger Ebert wasn't a fan. Uh, Leonard Malton gave it a little more uh, slack and said that it had its moments. It's a remake of a, a 1950s film directed by Richard Fleischer. Um, on, this is uh, written for the screen and directed by Peter Hyams, who did Capricorn 1, of course and um, many other great films he did. Uh, you get a commentary by uh, Peter Hyams, who also did the cinematography on this film, uh, making a featurette, uh, some sound bites and B-rolls, and audio commentary by uh, film historian and critic Peter Tonget. And this is, um, I guess we'll pull this out and show you the uh, actual... There you go, Narrow Margin, uh, 4K Ultra HD release. Uh, this is a beautiful-looking transfer. Uh, the bitrate hovers around in the 95 bits, megabytes per second. It's pretty high up there. Uh, so it's, it's really, it's, it's a good transfer if you're a fan of narrow margin. Uh, you know, I, I would recommend that. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, this uh, stars, of course, this is the original coming to 4K for the first time uh, with uh, Kevin McCarthy and Dana Winter. Uh, and um, this, uh, there was a previous release of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Uh, let me reach and get it. I think it's right. Yeah. So, this is the original Arrow, or rather Olive. <laughs> Olive Films, a now defunct video label, had released this some years back in a special edition. Um, the transfer on this was, you know, it was okay for what it was. Uh, I've seen worse. I've seen better. Um, and, but most of the, but uh, the the uh, the news on the new transfer. A lot of people are wondering about this. The uh, bit rate doesn't really get much above sixty. Uh, it's usually hovering in the fifty range on this. So the 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 bit rate is not incredibly high on this. Um, the original negative has been lost, uh, or so I'm under the. Uh, as I'm a, if my information is correct, it has been lost, and so they did the best they could with what they had to work with. 
Um, this, uh, you know, it's, like I said, the best elements they had. Um, I would say that it's pretty good. The detail is not quite as sharp as I would have liked, maybe, in spots. There are times when it's pretty pretty sharp, and then there's times when it's a little uh, less detailed, shall we say. Uh, it's kind of a mixed bag on the transfer. The audio is, is solid for a 50s film, I mean, you know, but... Um, but it, the good news is it's the best that we're ever going to get when it comes to a, uh, for uh, as far as a home video release of the original Invasion of the Body Snatchers, this, this is the best you're going to get. Uh, this comes from Kino Lorber, both of these uh, last titles, The Narrow Margin and this, Kino Lorber Studio Classics. Uh, you get uh, a couple of new commentaries here, uh, one by Richard Harlan Smith, another by Steve Mitchell and Nathaniel Thompson. Uh, and another one, actually three, another one by the professor and film scholar Jason Nay. Uh, you also get the archival commentary by Kevin, Kevin McCarthy and Dana Winter that was moderated by Joe Dante. And you get some featurettes, The Fear is Real, The Stranger in Your Lover's Eyes, I No Longer Belong, and the trailer. Uh, that's what you get here on Invasion of the Body Snatchers, uh, the 4K uh, unfortunately, probably because of licensing issues, you don't get, uh, Sleep No More, which is, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers Revisited, a, uh, it's like a 30-minute documentary that has Kevin McCarthy, Dana Winter, Mick Garris, Stuart Gordon, John Landis, and more. Uh, The Fear and the Fiction, The Body Snatchers Phenomenon is another documentary with the Kevin McCarthy, Dana Winter, Mick Garris, um, yeah, and there's a 1985 archival interview with Kevin McCarthy, uh, and a, uh, Return to Santa Myra, exploration of the film's locations. Uh, what's in a name on the film's title? I don't think that's on this one either. It is not. So you get a lot of featurettes on this uh, original Olive Films release that aren't on the new release. So uh, in terms of the extras, you may want to hold on to your old Olive Films release if you have it. I uh, just want to let people know. And we have a couple of... Uh, Releases here from MGM. They've uh, started releasing films from their catalog, uh, and um, they're solid transfers. They're uh, I think they're on-demand titles, so uh, they're manufactured on demand. Class is uh, one of those, with uh, Rob Lowe, Andrew McCarthy, and John Cusack. This film was uh, mentioned in the recent Bratz documentary, and it's a um, basically um, Rob Lowe's roommate is a kind of a romantic loser i guess it were and then um he uh he is seduced by an older woman and then eventually finds out that it's his mom <laughs> yikes <laughs> uh yeah music by Elmer bernstein in this film so this comedy so that was that was interesting directed by lewis john carlino also who also Wrote and directed The Great Santini, uh, wrote the screenplay for Resurrection with Ellen Burstyn, and uh, he was a uh, also Seconds with a Rock Hudson. He wrote the screenplay for that. Uh, I think he was a director for hire on this film because this doesn't really have a lot of his uh, uh, a lot of the trademarks of his stuff because um, he's not the writer on this. But you know, this was a pretty sizable hit in the summer of 1983. I remember when it came out. And uh, it's good to have it out there on uh, Blu-ray, uh, as it were. Um, after the release of 10 in 1979, Bo Derek was trying to find the next project, and uh, her husband wrote and directed this one, Bolero. Uh, she's a ingenue who's ready to shed the trappings of girlhood and become a woman upon graduating from school in Britain. She finds she hungers for more education in the art of love. Um, I don't know if this has been issued on Blu-ray before, but... Um, Anyway, uh, you know, it was a, a canon release and now controlled by the MGM uh, library. Uh, so, yeah, George Kennedy also in this. Uh, but, yeah, this this made a lot of... Um, uh, I, I, I've never actually got... I didn't get around to seeing it yet uh, before, so I can't really comment on the transfer. Just wanted to let people know it's out there. But, um, yeah, this, uh, this, this was a film that caused a little bit of a splash for... Uh, because she was, um, you know, she was a, she was a beautiful lady, and and uh, is still pretty elegant at her uh, uh, even now. So, uh, like I said, her husband uh, wrote and directed the film, but uh, Bolero um, is uh, out from MGM. And the last film here that I'm going to talk about, or last release, is a, a Blu-ray release from Warner Archive, The Man I Love, which is. Uh, 
stars Ida Lupino as a uh, torch singer who goes back to her small town and gets involved with mobsters. And uh, this was kind of the inspiration for Martin Scorsese's New York, New York. Um, this, uh, the, 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 uh, the really interesting tidbit of information here is that this uh, restores a six minute, uh, the six minutes cut from the film. Uh, that were unseen for nearly seven decades. Uh, there was a rights issue with the, uh, the, uh, the Warner Brothers didn't want to pay for the licensing in reissues uh, of one of the songs, and so uh, they just opted to cut it out of the film. But thankfully, they have taken care of, they've, that's been rectified, they found the materials, and they're able to do it. So that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty big news, I would say. The man I love, uh, it's, uh, uh, there are classic Warner Brothers cartoons, roughly squeaking and slick hair, and uh, an original theatrical trailer. So those are a few releases that I've picked up and I wanted to let people know about. And, uh, you know, as always, like, subscribe, or comment. I do like interacting with you, anybody who watches my videos. I, I appreciate it. And, uh, of course, my podcast, Adam's Corner, is available on all of your favorite platforms. Uh, Spotify, Adam, uh, App, Adam, Apple, <laughs> and uh, all of those places. So until next time, keep those discs spinning.